Let us go also back to the Dr. Brown quote. He was talking about irritability of muscle and nerve cells. Hence, CO2 is also relaxant of our muscles. So, Dr. Brown, after analyzing more than 300 publications devoted to hyperventilation, wrote that low CO2 level makes muscle more irritable. What does it mean? When we are healthy and we have hyper holding time, easy light breathing pattern, we are naturally relaxed. When we hyperventilate, our breathing is heavy. As in people with heart disease, asthma, cancer, diabetes, many other conditions. We are naturally tense because low CO2 makes muscle irritable. And it's normal that these people often have so-called aggressive defensive posture. The muscle get more tense and this tension accumulates in the upper part of the body. We can see it as slouching. If we go now to, for example, colleges, schools, universities, libraries, and we can see tens, hundreds of people who are sitting, and we can find out that more than 90% of modern people slouch. Breath holding time in the past 100 years ago was much higher in ordinary people. And in old movies, on pictures, we can see that posture of people in the past was much better. We can see straight spine, wild shoulders, chin up. It was normal for them to have, to have even grace in their gait, in the body movement. So the sicker we get, the heavier we breathe, and CO2 less and less make us more and more tense. Let us think about severely sick people, people who have only 5 seconds breath holding time. In health, it's normal for us to stand. When we have more heavy breathing, it's natural for people to sit 15, 20, 25 seconds. But when we are severely sick, these people lie in the bed. They can spend in the bed 10, 12, 15, even more hours every day. Why? Because the body is very tense. Breathing is very heavy. Another parameter of CO2 relates to dilation of our bronchi. What happens? Bronchi, our airways, have smooth layers of muscles around them. And when our breathing is light and easy, there is sufficient CO2 inside bronchi. So our bronchi are dilated. When we hyperventilate, they start to constrict. So let me write bronchodilator. 5 broncho dilator. Professor Emeritus Norman Straub from California wrote the following quote about effect of carbon dioxide on our bronchi. Agents that tend to delay airways include increased CO2, hypoventilation or inspired CO2. Norman Straub, Professor Emeritus, University of California at San Francisco School of Medicine. In the textbook on physiology, Straub, Section 5, The Respiratory System, 1998. So he wrote, hypoventilation. What does it mean, hypoventilation? Hypo means less. Hence, if people breathe less, those who are hyperventilating, the bronchi would delay. This effect is present in all people, but there is a certain category of people for whom this effect is very important. I'm talking about people with asthma. Why? Because asthmatics, in addition, have inflammation of airways, and we have extra mucus there. When we hyperventilate, the bronchi is constricted, plus we have inflamed cells, plus mucus. That makes movement of air is difficult. What we need in such conditions, when we have asthma attacks, we need CO2. In fact, Dr. Butek and his colleagues found that most asthmatics, up to 80-90% or more, are able to stop asthma attacks without using, for example, Vintalin or other bronchodilate. What we need is CO2. So what we need to do is simple thing. We need to hold the breath, maybe just 2-3 seconds, and then, then try to breathe easy, light. Try to take small inhale and relax the diaphragm. Accumulate air hunger. Keep it for 2-3-4 minutes. And, would be a surprise, the symptoms of asthma would be gone. So if you know anybody with asthma, that is a very useful thing to know. So people can stop asthma attacks using simple breathing exercises. CO2, in addition to that, is part of our blood. And when we hyperventilate, CO2 level gets lower. CO2 participates in the control of so-called acidity, alkalinity of blood. In normal human being, the alkalinity of blood, so-called pH, is about 7.4%. And it is controlled by the same group of nerve cells, which is located in the medulla oblongata. We control together breathing and pH of our blood. So let me write here, pH.
when we hyperventilate, pH of the blood is changed, and because of that, the body needs to readjust other ions sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and other minerals so that pH is kept exactly at the same level, 7.4 and we can expect that it can create abnormalities with these minerals in addition, CO2 participates in numerous chemical reactions for example, we can fix CO2, the gas from air, inside our brain and to produce amino acid called glutamine the reaction was discovered about 20 years ago now we have different reactions with vitamins, enzymes, and CO2 works as a catalyzer of these reactions. CO2 also participant of synthesis of many proteins. There are literally dozens of chemical reactions which require normal concentration of CO2. So let me write here, plus chemical reactions. One of the chemical reactions is Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle which is affected by presence of carbon dioxide. When we have normal carbon dioxide we have so called normal generation of energy. But what happens when our breath holding time is less and our breathing is heavy, CO2 level is low inside the cell. And what happens the citric acid cycle can stop or even get reversed in the opposite order. And in my view when breath holding time drops below 20 seconds most people are going to suffer from hypoxia inside their tissues and they're going to develop lactic acid, one of the symptoms of chronic fatigue.